Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. <sighs> wow, I don't even know where to begin. Um, so let's see. Brooklyn is in uh, in jail. Well, she's in the interrogation office at the time, and she's with Chase. And um, pretty much, Brooklyn is like, listen. You know, you're abusing your power and stuff like that. And, you know, besides me ripping up the ticket, what really happened? You know, he punched, you know, she punched him. Um, She punched um Sasha by accident. You know, and Brooklyn was like, listen, the only reason why you are putting me in jail right now is because I called you out on a lying piece of garbage that you are. And, um... And, um, Chase was kind of thinking, like, you know, he's not exactly wrong. And then, you know, he did a flashback where they met. By the way, there was, um, a lot of flashbacks. There was so many flashbacks that I actually had to fast forward past some of them. Because I'm like, I already, re I, I was there, I remember him, I don't, okay. Um... Yeah, a lot of flashbacks that had just, um, so yeah, he was, he was like, yeah, you know what? Because <laughs> at first he's, you know, and at one point he was sitting there playing a game with her because, you know, Brooklyn tried to call her dad. Her dad was pretty much like, nope, um, you're good. You can stay there for the night. Um, I'm not just going to keep bailing you out over and over again. And, um, so he's like, well, you know, that's your one phone call. Um. You know, he, he started to take the phone and Brooklyn was like, come on, you know, like you're just abusing your power, this, that, and the third. And Chase was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to leave the phone right here and I'm going to see how many more people that you can get to, to call to try to bail your ass out of jail. Go for it. Brooklyn was calling and calling and calling and calling and calling. Chase came in there. He was like, yep. So how did that turn out? They back, you know, they go back and forth and stuff like that. And that's when um, Brooklyn was like, listen, you cheated on your girlfriend and um, you're upset about me. You're upset with me about it. And, uh, you know, that's when it really hit Chase. Flashbacks, it really hit Chase. And Chase was like, you know what? I don't need to be here. But you do. So uh, good luck with all those phone calls that you are going to be making. And then Chase just left. Brooklyn called Julian. And, um... At the time, Julian was at the bar, you know, he was at the bar. Julian was at the bar, and he's talking to now. Now, wow, what a piece of work. Um, So now was like, hey, listen, I have a proposition for you. And Julian's like, um, let's make it five seconds so that way you can get the hell out of my damn bar. Ju um, now was like, listen, you still love Wiley, and I need a character witness. You be my character witness, you have full access to Wiley. I'm like, wow. I think we both, me and Julian was both just like, wow. So let me get this straight. You're just going to use your son to get your way once again. Just dangle your son's love in front of people to get your way. Mother of the year. And, um, you know, at the end of it, he was like, you know what? I'm good. I'm good. I, um... I'm going to do his best for Wiley by telling the court pretty much just how much of a bad person you are. So please, get me up there. Get me on the stand. I'll make sure it'll all work out. Now was like... So, you know, now standing there, being all confrontational. That's when he, um, that's when Julian gets the call, um, to bail out Brooklyn. And, um, so... Julian leaves... Picks up Brooklyn, and, um, you know, Brooklyn's like, oh, well, you know, you, you better have came for me, and, um, Julian's like, listen, I only, you only, you did me a favor by making sure I wouldn't strangle that woman, so, um, yeah, so Julian, um, I guess took her to the bar or whatever, I don't understand, she's not, does she not have her own car, does she follow him, I don't know, so, anyway, they end up at, um, Charlie's. Um, Brooklyn and, and Julian and you know they're talking and stuff like that and Brooklyn's like well you better have came because you know I still got that secret over you and um 
Jonah's like, yeah, thanks. That's, I bail you out of jail, and that's the things I get. They go back and forth. Um, Nell didn't leave the bar. She is hanging out in the bathroom for some odd reason. I guess the um, bar didn't close or whatever. But anyway, Brooklyn's like, so, I make sure that, and, and granted, to be fair, I guess they thought they were alone. And no one overheard. I don't understand. I'm confused as to the bar closed. Was the bar still open? I know that Julian told one of the waitresses that I'm going to step out for a little bit. Don't serve now. Do not serve this woman under any circumstance. And he went to go pick up Brooklyn. They came back. And I didn't see anyone else at the bar. So I'm assuming that it was closed. But yet Nell was still hanging out there. So. But then again they did sit there and say it was pretty, you know, now to sit there and say, well, it's pretty slow, so why are you rushing me? And I didn't even give you my proposition yet. So, um, Brooklyn was like, hey, listen, you keep doing these occasional favors, and I won't tell that you tamper with the brakes that, um, you know, got your son and Brad into a car accident. And now was just earshot away, just heard everything, and is smiling. Yep. So now Julian is screwed. Julian is screwed. <laughs> and, um, so let's talk about, this is actually one of the things I do love about reviewing this show, is that you can tell, like, when I do my reviews, you can tell from start to finish they're seeing some opening, middle, and close, and you don't really miss a beat. Um, so let's talk about Chase and Finn. This is after Chase walked out because he, he just realized, you know, once again, you know, he, he's hurting, you know, he's hurting. Um, so he goes to the pier, um, just to kind of just sit there and just think. And, of course, there's flashbacks of when he met his girlfriend and, um, how he was feeling. Listen, uh, the one thing that I did like about this episode, and I'm just going to sit there and say is off the top, um, is how they showed, you know, the male, you know, Chase dealing with his breakup. Um, you know, because here's the thing. You know, it's, it's always this belief that, you know, women, when they break up, they're in tears and they're crying, and they're emotional and they're upset. And when a guy breaks up, you know, we're just like, oh, well, I need her anyway. You know, I'm just rock solid. I'm good. I'll just find somebody else, you know. And that's not how it is for all males. Um, if you didn't know that, now you know. Not that for all males. Um, yeah. Not gonna lie, definitely kind of hit a, a sore spot for me. Just throwing it out there. Um, but yeah, um, you know, it. He was upset. He was visually. He was. He was sad. He was heartbroken. You know. Um, there's a certain. And I mean, personal experience. You know, there's a certain familiar familiarity. I can't pronounce it, but like that. When you lose someone, when you're not with that person, there's a certain, there's a certain connection that's going, there's a certain, you know, there's, I can't, I can't speak for him, but I can speak for myself and probably most men, you can be very, you can be vulnerable with that significant other, that you can't be with other people, and you miss that. You know, because throughout the day, throughout whatever you're doing, you know, doctors, lawyers, whatever, you know, you have to have a certain level of Kevlar on you, you know. But it's nice to know that when you're with that other person that you can be vulnerable, you know. You show strength by allowing yourself to be vulnerable. And he missed that, you know. Um, He was, he was upset. And I'm not going to lie. It was a certain part of me that was... Kind of, um, I don't want to 
wouldn't say tearing up, but he got a little kind of emotional. I'm not going to lie. Um, so he's, he's upset. And um, Finn calls him up. And Finn's like, hey, listen, you know, did you tell Willow? And Chase is like, yo, listen, I don't want another lecture. And, Chase, and Finn was like, do you want a beer? Um, Finn was like, do you want a beer? And Chase is like, you know what? I'm good. You know, I, I'm just, I'm not good company to be around. I don't want to snap at you. And you're doing something that's really nice. Um, and especially considering how their relationship was in the beginning, they have came in far, they've came a long way. And Chase is like, you know what? I'm good. I'm just sitting at the bar. I'm just sitting at the pier, pier 51 or whatever. I'm good. You know, um, I just want some space and some time to be by myself. And Phil was like, all right, cool. I understand if you need me to call, you call me if you need me. Then hangs up the phone. Um, Chase is just sitting up there, just heartbroken. Um, then Finn shows up because that's what you do when your family, your friends are hurting. You know, regardless if they say they don't want you there, you show up. Um, and so Finn shows up and, um, you know, he's just being a sounding boy. You know, Chase starts telling the story about how he met her and all the great times that he shared and, you know, little cute moments and stuff like that. And, um, you know, he was just being a good sounding board. <sighs> um, so, he's being a good sounding board and stuff like that. And, you know, towards the end, Finn is like, I mean, Chase is like, listen, I'm doing this because I do love her. You know, because I love her so much that I'm willing to let her go. Because I'm not going to be selfish. And, you know, because she, she loves Wiley. You know, and she can't be with me if she feels that Wiley is going to be hurting or in danger or upset because of no. You know, I'm not going to do that. I love her way too much. And that's what he told, that's what he told Finn. And I mean, Finn was just being a good sounding boy. I don't think he was going to really kind of interject or whatever. And he was like, I, you know, Chase is like, listen, I am grateful. I'm glad that you, you're, you're supporting me, even though you don't believe, you don't believe my cause pretty much. And I was like, listen, you are, I can't remember exactly what he said, but he was like, you are, you're an idiot. You're a good intentional, you're a good intentions idiot or something along those lines. And, um, you know, he was like, Chase is like, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm good. I'm just gonna sit here for a little bit, you know, thanks for the beer and, and, and for the listening. And, uh, Chase was like, alright, I mean, Finn was like, alright, you know what, listen, you got my number, call me, if anything comes up, you want to talk, or whatever. And, you know, Finn does not seem like the hugger, you know, some people are huggers, some people are not, Finn does not seem like one of them. But Finn knew that Chase was hurting, um, so Finn was like, you know what, listen, just, just bring it in, you know, and, you know, you, you see Chase, and this is the part that kind of, it, it broke me a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. Chase is like, all right, fine, you know, like he didn't want to do it. He didn't want to do it. And I've, I've been there, you know, I know what it's like to not feel like you can just handle it by yourself. And you, 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 you don't want to, you don't want to admit that you can't handle it. Because the minute that you feel you can't handle it, the minute that you, you hug that person or whatever, it's like, all of that emotion just comes right out and you just you, you just don't want to you don't you don't want to you don't want to let that stuff come out um and you saw it you know when he hugged he when he hugged Finn and he held on to himself so tight like he did not want to ball up in tears and I'm not gonna lie I, that 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 point right there I, I got a little misty eye just a little bit um because I've been there and even if you haven't grown well, most people at this point, if they've watched the soap opera, at some point in their life, they've been there. So they know exactly what that feeling is like. And that part, I'm not going to lie. When he hugged him and he was like closing his eyes like he wanted the ball, his ball out of his fucking eyes. I, it it got me. Um, And after that, you know, Finn left and Chase just kind of just stood there at the pier. Um, and right before then, okay, I'm going to have to go back a little bit. He was at the bar, he went to Charlie's, and he sat down, and Nell was there, and Nell looked, and of course, you know, she was just 
she saw Chase looking vulnerable, and so she just went in and started poking, 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 because that's what Nell does. And then, um, you know, they're going back and forth and stuff like that. And Nell flat out was just like, granted, there were some flashbacks with Chase um, hooking up with Nell. And Nell, and this is the part where it got me a little annoyed with the soap opera, um, because Nell was like, listen, I get what I want. When I want not when I want Wiley, I'ma get him. And if I want you, I'ma get him. Now, kinda annoyed me for two reasons. One, I'm not gonna lie, that kinda turned me on a little bit. Just just a little bit. Some a woman that's just that fucking confident, I was like, Oh, I should be annoyed at your arrogance, but I'm not. Um So yeah, that that you know also I felt like if the roles were reversed and he was like the bad guy and he practically said to her, oh, if I want to get you, I can have you. There would have been so many women that would have called him a fucking a slime ball and a pig and this, that, and third. But they put that scene where a woman said that and somehow I feel like there's going to be no backlash from that. But, um, yeah, so that happened and, uh... Chase was like, you know what, I'm, I, I can't with you. So that's when he walked and he walked to the pier and, yeah. Uh, let's see. Michael and Willow talk after, um, Michael and Willow talk after, um, Diane preps both of them about the case that's coming up and just reminds Willow, hey, do not get emotional. Michael, for the most part, you're good. Don't let her get on your under your skin, but Willow, I've seen you in court, I've defended you in court, do not screw this up, pretty much, and so, you know, after that, Michael and Willow talk, and they talk about the friendship, and stuff like that, and it's just a ton of fucking flashbacks, by the way, which I had to fast forward, towards the, um, towards the middle part, um, Michael's like, hey, listen, you know, you know, it'd be even better, if we get married, like, everyone else is not there telling us to, and they go back and forth and stuff like that. And Willow's all like, oh, well, you know, just to let you know, I can never love you. Are you fine with being a woman? Are you fine with being with a woman for the rest of your life that is going to never love you? And, you know, they talk about, well, you know, we're doing it for Wiley. We love Wiley. So there is love there. And, you know, Willow's like, all right, sure, fine. And they talk about some boundaries and stuff like that about friendship. But at the end of it, it pretty much has come down to Michael asking Willow to marry her and Willow saying yes. And 15 minutes of a montage of flash forwards. I mean, on um, flashbacks. So, uh, yeah, they're going to get married. Uh, I've seen it. Oh, I mean, you know, obviously they agreed to get married. And in the previews, they talked about, you know, they showed them getting married. Um, or the announcement of them getting married. Whatever. They're going to get married. Uh... Let me just pause it. I just want to make sure I got all my bases covered. Yeah. Um. So that's pretty much about it. Um. I got it. I got to sit there. And say, so pretty much at this point, the recap is pretty much over. Um. But I got to sit there and say, out of everyone's scenes, um, I really, really, really like Chase scenes the best. And I got to sit there and say, um, Chase has come a long way. And this is the thing that I don't understand about General Hospital sometimes, that you can you can have a character come in the show and be a great character. You know, you can turn him into an amazing character. You can turn them into an amazing character. And then you can have you can have a character that comes in and they start off really great and then they do something and then they make him really terrible. And then you can have a character like Stella that started off really terrible. And then even though that they changed her, I felt like the damage was already done. And now you barely see her on the show. And when she is, she's just more of a um, guest appearance. So I don't really understand. Um, <laughs> some days I just don't understand during the hospital. And um, also, because I've been getting so annoyed with these, um, you know, flashback Fridays of them not going back fast um, f farther enough. I'm going to be doing my recommendations on scenes that I think that will be really interesting to watch 
um, for yourself on YouTube. Um, and I'm going to be recommending some like really good oldies. I mean, some really old episodes, you know, um, back when Emily was there, Emily was there back when, um, when we had the first Emily, I imagine. Um, I'm going to be, you know, doing some recommendations on what I call the real flashback Friday, you know, um, because yeah, um, it's just my personal opinion, but I think that some of the flashbacks have sucked. And um, even the ones that were great, I felt like they should have went back further enough. I mean, they should have been went back further enough. Um, and again, you know, my favorite scenes was Chase um, talking about how he's sacrificing, you know, his happiness um, because he loves Willow so much. You know, he sacrificed his happiness for Willow and for Wiley. That was amazing. That obviously hit home. Um, but uh, yeah. So that's going to do it for this um, recap of um, General Hospital. Thank you for watching. I know Mondays usually it comes out later. So I really do appreciate any anybody that watches these. Especially on Mondays. Because it's been getting kind of later. Um, work has been crazy. So I, you know. I apologize for the delay. Um, have a good day or good night, depending on when you're watching this. You're probably going to watch this in the daytime. So have a good day, be safe, all that good stuff, and I will catch you in the next recap.